In this video you'll see one way that you can work with um, lists of data and actually move data from uh, one list to another but what we're actually doing is moving data from one table to another and have the lists uh, reflect that data movement. Um, there are a lot of uh, list uh, methods available but I, I believe at the end of the day you still have to take care of uh, processing uh, the data in those lists if you want to uh, if you want to do something with them such as save the data in tables. Uh, one such method is um, a move selected rows method. Um, I'll just demonstrate that here. So we've got um, we've got a list of, of enrolled individuals and what we want to do is move them into an attended list. So I can just do that and they actually move from one list to another list. Um, that's a that's a great method, but you still since you want oh this confirms it's just happening because I've got a different name in there, but we can see that the data actually did move. Um, what um, what you're going to have to do though is um, is still process uh, process the data if you want them to show up uh, specifically in tables. So um, let me just go back to design. I'll go back to working preview. So uh, what we've got here in um, doing this in code, I'm just going to select a bunch of records. And so we've got seven people selected. David, George, and Henry did not attend. So now I'm going to um, press the submit button. And what we'll find is that um, everybody we selected has attended and everybody that was not selected did not attend. And uh, we're just writing writing records from this list SQL table to this SQL table that this list is based on and while we're writing out the data we're just um, we're turning a bit on and off uh, true or false and this is just a dynamic image to indicate uh, visually that uh, someone didn't attend so you can actually uh, get rid of this column just hide it so you can just see visually who attended and who didn't so let's go and have a look to see how, how this was done. We've got two uh, relatively simple lists. Uh, they're based on SQL tables, uh, simple SQL selects. Uh, not much is going on. We're ordering by the attended name. Um, if we jump into the tables, we'll see that um, that's, the, that's the table of people who are attending. So I'm going to go and get rid of that data that we just put in there and then we've got a list of um, attendees or enrolled people so that's a static not a static list but it's a list that uh, that we're going to uh, run from so I'll just move that out of the way uh, our second list is based on our uh, TBL attendance table, the people who are who have actually attended and not attended. Uh, again, it's just a straight SQL SQL table. Here we've got we added a dynamic image for that, and then we put an image definition in. If attend confirm is equal to true, then we have a happy face, and if it's false, we have a sad face. So that's in there. This property is fairly straightforward stuff for all the rest of this this stuff. Um, cancel out of that. The the button which just moved the rows from one to another just used a list control action. Action name was move selected rows from one list to another list, list one to list two. Um, so you see these are some great actions and, um, and methods that you can use. But um, again at the end of the day you're still going to have to process data if you want you want that data to wind up in uh, in tables. Uh, this is a button. This is a define control button. It's just a submit reset button. We don't even need the reset in this case. I just left it in there. But uh, when this button is clicked, the this, in, this code is automatically put in. Uh, submit happens. So that's great. I'll just cancel out of that. And when the submit happens, the server side event for after after di dialog validate fires. So this is where we're doing everything. So we are dimensioning a lot of stuff in here. I'm just gonna move this over and extend this a bit. Um, 
we're dimensioning all the stuff that we need in here. Uh, we're creating... Now, the, the information that we're getting from our first list is in the E object, uh, dot data submitted, dot list one. So that's all the data that's submitted. That's in an array. That's great. Now, we're going to save off that array and we're going to use it somewhere else, but we will be using this list one. Uh, we're going to open our named connection, which is great. Uh, we just check to make sure that that's running OK. And this is our SQL statement. So insert into TBL attendance. We're going to put in a tend ID, a tend name, and a tend confirm. Uh, these are the people who did uh, who did attend because we're going to process those first. And the values that we're going to set up as arguments are a tend ID, a tend name, a tend confirm. So we need to get uh, a count of how many people actually came in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this again so that you can see why we're doing what we're doing. Working preview. I'm going to pick these. I'm going to pick three people. Um, now I've got um, two fields in here, ID and name. So that's important to know as well. So let's submit this. OK, I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of that. So um, if I just get rid of all of this and just type in E, then we can see that we're going to get some information. Uh, data submitted from list one. Now I've got nine values in the array. Uh, one each for an ID and the name, because that's what we're dealing with, an ID and a name, plus Alpha throws in another one for the index of the item, a zero-based index of the item that we're dealing with. So um, ID number two in Aaron belongs to the very first item in the list, which is a zero-based item, so it'll be zero. Ten and Amy belong to one, and uh, nine and Bob belong to number two. So we've got nine items, um, two that we have plus a third one that Alpha has put into the mix. So I'm just going to halt that at this point, and we're going to go back into design mode here. So um, I want a count of how many items we're really dealing with. So I'm going to do I'm going to do it really simply. We've got an array in list one. I'm going to grab the size because I know that we're dealing with three columns of data, uh, I'm going to divide it by three and I'll get a real uh, a real array count, a real record count, or a real row count that, that I need to process. So we go on, uh, we're going to go into a loop and um, for one to insert counts, so in this case I selected three. So from one to three I'm going to add an argument which is up here, here, uh, convert our um, list one uh, first argument, which is our ID, to, um, to a number and assign it to this argument. And now I set data count up here as a numeric equals one. So I'm running through the list now. So I'm saving off the selected keys um, I'm doing this. I'm setting another array just because it's going to be easier to process for those people that didn't attend. So I just created another array and I'm saving this to an array, uh, this, this value, the ID, into another array. And now let's go and grab the attendee name, which is data count plus one, which should be two, so the second item in the list. And then attend confirm, I'm just setting to the value of one. Um, it's a bit value of one. Now, we have to, um, I'll come back to that in a sec. So then we execute our SQL statement, we check to see if it's okay, and then we go around into the loop again. Now this data count, which we're using up here to, to get the, uh, as an index into the array, um, we take our data count and we uh, add three to it. Because now, remember, we selected three records, which really means that we have nine items in the array. And there are other things that you can do with alpha x basic to um, to make that array maybe a little bit easier to deal with, you can um, you can use uh, a pointer and names in the array as well. But I thought let's just keep this kind of simple. 
So now we're looking at the, uh, the fourth item in the array, which is the beginning of our second record. So I hope that kind of makes sense. And we just go around a couple of times and we just keep adding uh, information into our table for people who attended. Okay, so now that we've now we've got all that, um, then we're going to come down in here, and we're going to this um, set our select statement equal to the same select statement as we have with our attendees. Uh, we don't need the order stuff. So these are the people who signed up for a course, for example. Um, and so then we execute that statement. Uh, we get our stuff back. So then we have a result set. So we should have, what, I think 10 records in there, I believe. Oh yeah, it's not running. Um, so now um, we grab our first row. If there are no records in the result set, then we just close everything out and let, let you know. So we have a result set now. It's got 10 rows in it. It looks exactly the same as list one. So that's good. So now, now we've got list one. Now, we create an in us. Uh, we set our SQL statement to uh, because we don't. We've already used our SQL statement up here to get our record set. We don't need it again. So we can reset it to an insert into our attendance because now we're putting people in who have not attended. So we're um, so we've set that SQL statement. And then while this flag is true, so we've got records. So while the flag is true, we uh, we grab our current ID from our record set which I'm setting to uh, attend ID. So now we've got our first ID out of the 10 in our list one. And we are going to have a look inside our selected keys, which we set up here. Remember we saved that, selected keys. This is just an array of all the keys of the people who did attend. And so these are the people who did attend, and we're looping through all of the people who potentially could attend. So we say um, in, the, in the array of people who did attend, is this key in there? So if the current key out of the 10 in the list 1 is found in the set of keys that were selected, then we know that person attended. And this will actually turn, um, will be a positive value. But if we don't find the person that we're looking for from our list one in the people, in the, in the array of selected items, then if we don't find it, then it's going to be a value of zero. So we didn't find it, or the, the, um, the data key in the, um, from the full list in the selected keys. So we didn't find it. So that means this person did not attend. So we're going to set our arguments for the attend, uh, attend ID, which we already have, current ID, attend name for the RS data attend name. So we grab it from the record set. And attend confirm, we're going to set our bit value to zero. Uh, we execute our statement and test it, and grab our next row, and look again. So out of the 10 rows, we just, once again, we just look for uh, each one of those 10 rows inside the array of those keys that were actually selected as attended. And um, that's it. So we filled up um, our second table with people who didn't, didn't attend from our people in the um, first list. Who did and didn't attend, and then down here we set uh, e dot JavaScript um, to go and refresh both lists. You don't really need to refresh list one, but I thought I'd put that in to illustrate that you can put in more than one list in here to refresh the list data. So if we see this running, just got a working preview. We got Aaron. We'll just select a bunch of names. So most everybody attended. I'll run this. And we can see everybody attended except for the two that I didn't select. So that works out pretty well. It's a bit of code, but um, and it's probably just one way to do it. But um, it's pretty fast and it works quite well. Thanks for watching.